Thank you, uh, Grace, for giving me the floor and good day, excellencies and colleagues around the world. <clears throat> I have to admit that I, that I have little uh, concrete experiences in South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation. Nevertheless, I deeply reflected on the topic and I followed many presentations and projects and participated in many negotiations uh, around uh, South-South cooperation. One thing always struck me. <clears throat> Whenever one talks about South South cooperation, the notion of complementarity, of uh, cooperation, partnerships are used to describe the quality of um, South South cooperation. And these are very positive connotations, but let's have a closer look at these concepts. I mean, complementarity, which means basically two things complement each other, but is the product convincing? Is the result whole? Is the result complete? Or are we just talking about two things that do not hurt each other? Also, the notion of partnership, this evokes the picture of things that are equal, uh, partners that are equal, equal value, equal importance, equal influence. Is this true? And who is judging this? And why I'm, I'm asking these questions? I ask these questions because in all the moments when I came across the concept, uh, of South-South cooperation, I got the impression that there are many obstacles, doubts, mistrust. So where is the problem? If I add a triangular cooperation, uh, the issue is getting even more complicated. A country from the north, basically a donor country, is supporting a cooperation between two or more countries from the south. I do not enter into the question about which values, principles, concepts, frameworks, and so on should be used. There is a, an overall agreement that this cooperation should have a positive impact on the, for the target group, the, the target group being in the South. This brings us to the question who defines these things and more importantly, what are the methods used to come uh, to an agreement, a mutual understanding about the target, the impact and the outcome. Of course, there are millions of tools that are used to define projects, to describe quality, to design processes, uh, to measure results, to judge efficiency and effectiveness. Most of them really make sense, are applied in many different contexts and have proven to be helpful. So far, so good. So still, where is the problem? If I jump to a key phrase of the South-South cooperation that I like to quote from the uh, Buenos Aires part, uh, plan of action plus for the outcome document, but also other documents. Um, and I quote, South-South cooperation and its agenda have to be set by countries of the South and should continue to be guided by the principles of respect for national sovereignty, national ownership and independence, equality, non-conditionality, non-interference in domestic affairs and mutual benefit. End of the quote. Um, these words, uh, the words of this paragraph seems to be written in stone, I, I like to say, because these principles are untouched and remain the same in many resolutions um, but when member states talk about uh, um, South-South cooperation. Fine, they make sense, but uh, they create also a lot of um, of opposition in all the negotiations about uh, South South cooperation and triangle cooperation. Before I continue to, <clears throat> I would like to take you uh, kind of a, uh, on a journey, which is about the way we talk to each other on things that matter to us. The key word I quote in the beginning, cooperation, partnership, complementarity, describe basically an interaction without defining how exactly this interaction should be handled, designed and done. We have different modes to talk to each other, from a one-way monologue to a debate where competing ideas are exchanged and challenged, uh, to a conversation that explores the thinking behind words and over to basically a dialogue where ideas are created and new meanings are made together. Each of these modes uh, to talk uh, are used in certain situations and for a certain, in, for a certain context. The last one, the, the dialogue modes, is where ideas are exchanged and new meanings are made together, seems to me especially relevant in our context here. 
From my experiences with situations where people from different contexts, from different countries, but with similar ideas and objectives, I made the following uh, observations. Concrete projects are marked by committed individuals, and they are very specific social, economic, uh, political, and geographical contexts that guide these, um, these projects. Committed people are often driven by what I would call global concerns for mankind, like the idea of a peaceful earth, the awareness of the threats of global warming, or the fact that your families and loved ones are not around us, but may be spread all over the planet. The globalization has made the world smaller, distances are shrinking, we get used to a virtual reality, we get knowledge about places on earth that we have never seen with our eyes. This what I would call this global social fabric is a strong driver for change towards a better world, towards sustainability and the most appropriate dialogue mode to talk. In my eyes and my understanding, projects of South South cooperation is uh, the, the, or this concept is an instrument to transform these shared global concerns, these commitments beyond immediate. Uh, communities, these bridges between communities that live far apart into a profound dialogue. So to transform these concerns into a profound dialogue, a mutual learning process, and ultimately uh, to a planning and implementation of concrete dialogues. What is needed in, in this uh, dialogue mode is a mutual consent between communities and the openness for both of both parties to learn to adapt, to develop and accept the fact that the process may lead to a conclusion um, that the exchange was fruitful, but concrete action, a concrete project does not make sense. So there is no measurable result, no projects to be funded, only sharing and learning. If I go back to the opposition against the principles, my analysis is that the principles uh, formulated from a are formulated from a national perspective perspective whereas the concrete south south experiences are more on a local level more a solidarity between local communities rather than between nations and that national priorities may not be the first and best guiding principles for local communities in many cases and sovereignty would be most needed on the local level rather than on the national level. The, the idea of think globally and act locally, initially used in the 70s in the context of city development, a, a perfectly applies also to, um, to um, South South cooperation. So in a conclusion, I would, I would say South South cooperation and triangular cooperation should be basically an action between local communities should be done in a dialogue mode, like I described, with a respectful exchange, explore new avenues, create added values, basically one plus one equal three and not only two. Um, so I encourage uh, all the countries of the North to support such, such cooperation, such South-South cooperation that are marked by true solidarity as it is reflected in many documents. Um, but uh, I insist on that. If if this if the mode to talk to each other is not respectful, is not um, driven by the needs of local communities, then South-South cooperation um, and triangular cooperation is challenged and uh, you face obstacles when implementing them. So that's, um, I hope this reflection was useful for all of you and I um, wish you um, all the best. I'm open for uh, answering any questions if there are any. Thanks a lot for giving me the floor.